All right, so good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to this theater presentation on uh, Cisco Platform Exchange Grid, or PX Grid for short. Uh, so how's your Cisco Live experience so far? I hope you folks are having a nice time. And I also wanted to thank you for being a valued Cisco customer, because that's really important to us. So my name is Brian Gonzalez, and uh, out here I have my distinguished colleague, Nancy Cam Winget. And today we're going to talk to you about um, Cisco PX Grid, why we developed that, what it can do for you, and then also go into some use cases, how to get started and use DevNet to basically come on board and expand our ecosystem. So PX Grid uh, basically is an instantiation of Cisco Identity Services Engine today. And there are three use cases or three reasons why we came up with PX Grid. So the first one is that we can provide our ecosystem partners with context. See, the, 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 there is a benefit of one plus one equal to three when you partner with uh, third party vendors. And, uh, and that's all a benefit to the end customer. So from the first use case, what we do is, uh, so example, if we have a Nessus tenable Nessus scanner that's connected to our ecosystem. Typically, what would happen is that the scanner would find a vulnerability on IP address 192.128.1.1, and there's, there's, some, there's malware going on there. But that's, that's not very actionable. What ICE provides is that context. So now we know it's not just an IP address, but it's Brian. He's part of the marketing team. Um, he's on a jailbroken iPad. So you've got this context that basically can help make the system even more uh, meaningful to take action on. The, the other use case is we also get benefit from our third party ecosystem players where we can enrich our, our systems with uh, more information. So case in point is um, our MDM play. So we have a, a slew of MDM partners that connect into ICE. So now we can create policies such that we learn from the MDM that uh, John over there has uh, an iPad, but it's jailbroken. So now we can write policy in Cisco ICE saying, if, if an iPad is jailbroken, put them on the quarantine VLAN. So that telemetry we learn from our third party vendors. So that's the second kind of use case. And why customers care is, is because it's now a single place where you can have comprehensive network access. And the third most interesting thing that uh, we've, we've come to find out is that we can use our third party ecosystem partners to now reach in back to the Cisco network. So what I mean by reaching in back to the Cisco network. Take for example this use case of uh, the scanner, the vulnerability scanner. Uh, you run the vulnerability scan and you find out that there is uh, a high risk vulnerability on an endpoint. Using our ecosystem and PX Grid, the scanner admin doesn't have to pick up a call and call his counterpart who's on the network side, but from, uh, the, ten, uh, from the Nessus GUI itself can launch a quarantine request to ICE. That, in turn, changes, changes into a radius change of authorization, and you can move the VLAN from a uh, regular VLAN to a quarantine VLAN. So now we're giving the power of reaching back into the Cisco network to our third party vendors. So we call this adaptive network control. So now it's not just one plus one is two, but I would say one plus one is five. So, uh, the, the, so basically what happens, and the reasons why people like this is that it decreases time. And in security, in security space, we know that time is of essence, right? The faster you respond to threats, the better you are at containing things. Uh, and responding to security and network events is what this feature enables you to do, to take mitigation actions. So how do we do all of this? We, have, we created this uh, concept and this technology called PX Grid. And by we, I mean Nancy, because she is one of the chief architects. So she's here to talk to you, and she'll talk to you about details going forward. But think of PX Grid as a messaging superhighway. Uh, it's an information bus where you have um, third-party ecosystems connecting to, to this grid and sharing contextual information. 
so what happens is Cisco Ice, you know, it's, it's our uh, uh, flagship NAC product, but it also behaves as the PX grid controller. It's, it's the device that sets up the whole grid. And after you set up the grid, you have, say for example, I have, um, um, you know, I have devices that connect to the grid. Say something that wants location information. There's another, there's another that has application information but does not have location. So, so these elements connect into the grid, and ICE acts as a broker. You basically get authorized, you get authenticated first, then you get authorized, and then after you basically authorize, you can publish what you want to share with the rest of the, com of the PX grid community. So vendor A publishes, vendor B publishes, and then uh, what you do is you, you discover what is there available on the grid. And then you can pick and choose what, you interest, what is interest to you. So what we also see is that ICE, besides being the grid controller, can also get a benefit from this because uh, it can act also as a consumer of this information. So in this way, the grid is set up, and we've got multiple uh, partners that can participate in this grid. So you may ask us why we came up with this grid. Uh, this grid concept, and the thing is that traditionally you can do this with APIs, the REST APIs, or you know of that sort. But there are limitations to. Uh, we as Cisco took a step back and said, if you're going to have many of these API integrations, it's not going to be scalable. You got to know vendor A's API. You need to know vendor B's API, uh, and vendor B. If vendor A and B want to talk to each other, they need to then develop APIs. So what we decided to do was. When you join the grid, you, you basically include in your product what is called as a grid control library. When you plug that in, you can basically talk grid language. So you have got, if you have all partners talking the grid same language, it's easier to do business. Uh, so also, with APIs, they are kind of, um, kind of static. So if you have a release of an API in one version of the code, and if you want to make changes, you've got to wait for the next version to make changes to that code for the APIs. Whereas with PX Grid, because it's very flexible and configurable, you can change what you want to share or not, just based on how we have set up the whole grid infrastructure. Also, another important thing is that um, when you have many of these systems connecting, APIs traditionally are a polling mechanism. So you have a vendor A say, you know, I need this information, I need this information, I need this information. It keeps polling, so that has a toll on the system if you have a lot of integrations. So with PX Grid, you can subscribe to certain topics that of interest to you and just wait for that alert to come in. You don't have to keep polling. So that decreases your workload, it, it, decreases, it increases performance of the system. So that's the reason why we chose PX Grid. Also, because we are Cisco uh, and, we, and security is a concern, PX Grid is a very secure environment. So just as how we authorize and authenticate users and devices, we authorize and authenticate third-party systems onto the grid. So you first need to authenticate, you get authorized of what you can do and you can't do, and also the infrastructure is secure with encryption. So those are the reasons why we chose to go down this path. What happens is, in, uh, and I'll give an example or a use case where we kind of use PX Grid today. So today we see that a lot of folks have moved to mobility and you want to access uh, applications in the cloud, say salesforce.com. And typically what does um, uh, SSO applications look at? We look at the user and you know, once you know who the user is, what AD group you belong to, you allow him access onto the cloud. But with mobility comes challenges. Now, is the device a corporate device? Is it jailbroken? Um, how do you con kind of control that? So what we do is with ICE, and with PX Grid, we are able to provide a little more context to what that user can do. So the same user who is going to connect to a Salesforce from his iPad, now we basically say, you know, you can only access this if you're on the network, if you're part of, say, an exec group, as long as you're in uh, the Europe region, as long as you're during the Europe business hours. So we can provide granular control to uh, cloud-based applications as well. And we do this with one of our vendors. It's called Ping Identity. We do that, and we have more SSO vendors that are coming, coming into the fold. 
So with that, I'll uh, hand the baton to you. Thank you, Brian. So Brian has kind of set up the stage. I wanted to just take a quick poll. How many of you are familiar with the ICE product? Oh, good. And security, I don't think I can catch you, Andrew. Security-based products, okay, a few. So I'm presuming you guys are mainly knowledgeable on the IT space. What we've been encountering is the need to provide you better tooling for how to get better visibility. And as Brian was explaining through the ANCs, through the adaptive network control, how to provide better control for you to improve operations, and especially we're in the security group, so we're very security focused. Um, the PX grid can allow you better con control, not just from a security perspective, but in general of your overall framework. How we do that is through the platform exchange grid or the PX grid. So I'm gonna walk you through very quickly into the architecture and I can hang around a little bit afterwards because um, I'm sure I tend to ramble. Um, if we run out of time, if you have questions, please come by and, and ask more. So Brian alluded to the notion of ICE acting as the, pla as the PX grid controller, okay? So for those of you who are familiar with ICE, ICE takes on different personas, if you will, or different roles. So one of the roles that now it can take is it can act as that control function to help facilitate the security aspects of how you share that information. So in general terms, the way I describe the controller is, is it's affecting the two, two major sets of functions. One is it's going to affect who's allowed to share what information and how they share it. So that's number one. The second one is the aspiration in the PX grid is while today we're showcasing the information, the data that gets aggregated out of ICE. So if you look at the management and troubleshooting, we're already aggregating through that richer policy control what I call the end tuple, right? The who, what, when, where is coming in through the network. As we're now partnering with companies like Splunk, NetIQ, and so on, they can also do further aggregations and share that and make that visible to you. And then again, through the ANC, you can now be better informed and take better control of saying, hey, Nancy's doing some suspicious behavior, maybe I better switch her to her VLAN or terminate that session because she really shouldn't be using that iPad, as an example, right? If you go to our station, you'll see how we've integrated um, improved security controls, if you will, with our partners. So this slide is basically showing you the main role of the controller. What you'll get out of the DevNet zone is basically the tools that you need to function to extract or share your own information, and that's through the PX, um, the grid client. So next slide, please. So if you look at the evolution, why did we do this? To me, it was twofold. In ICE, we already recognized the fact that we were a data aggregator. We could provide that richer information so that when you looked at your report, so for example, with the partnership of Landcope, you're now not just seeing the traffic based on IP address, but now you can filter and look at it based on the different types of users or different types of devices or different type levels of compliance, okay? When we did this in ICE 1.0, we did it using a REST API. We very quickly found out through our partner feedback, one, we were flooding the network because of that polling mechanism, right? Two, what we really needed to do was provide, in some cases, just the updates. So from that standpoint, we needed a dynamic way to provide those updates or allow for what I call a directed query. So if you're looking at a specific vulnerability, some sp suspicious behavior, you could just say, let me just query what Nancy is doing as opposed to just tell me what's out at the edge of the network. So that's how we evolved it. And there are many other examples we're just trying to use how we evolved the ICE 1.0 set of APIs to be much more flexible and agile using the PX Grid ecosystem. Next slide, please. So what you will see in the DevNet zone in the toolkit is 
you're going to get the client library itself. And that's to help facilitate and abstract how we may be doing the pub sub messaging, how we may be doing the querying. But that abstraction is helping you get to that scalability and without you having to go through the management and configuration of, I know I need to get con information from the ICE that's in the UK versus Italy versus US or from all three. So trying to abstract the knowledge of where your sources of information may be. So that's one of the components. The other component is trying to abstract. We may have different protocols in the data plane, trying to abstract that through a single API. In that toolkit also, you're going to get um, sample information, and I'll be repeating that a little bit, um, for the types of inputs and outputs to expect out of the client. Next slide, please. OK. So a little bit about the innards if you're curious about how we built the PX3 client. How many of you are familiar with Jabber? Not very many. OK, so that's one of our collaboration tools, instant messaging, which has video and audio. So that lended itself to a natural architecture for how we could scale both in the number. So if you look at our Jabber services, we can support upwards of millions of users. We expect the ecosystem to grow to that length as well, as well as the time latencies in which you may need to obtain the information, meaning as soon as a new presence comes into the network, you want to know that right away. That's what I mean by real time. So from all of that, the Jabber architecture was constructed based on an open source set of protocols called XMPP. The XMPP architecture and code base is instantiated using the XCP as the control server, and then the XMPP is the actual protocol. One of the biggest features in the XMPP architecture and the XCP is the notion of using flexible but strong mutual authentication, okay? So through that mechanism in the first release, you'll see that we are attempting, not attempting, but we are enforcing that if an ICE wants to share, for instance, information with a LandCope solution, they both have to use certificates to mutual authenticate to the controller. All right. Second is trying to abstract and give you the agility and option of, do you want dynamic notifications or do you want directed queries or both? And so from that capability, we needed to provide the agility in allowing both functionalities from a time sensitivity standpoint. Next slide, please. OK. So basically, what you're going to see in the toolkit is the ability to help you connect into this ecosystem securely and share the information. Now, from a policy perspective, as I mentioned earlier, the controller is really being that agent that's monitoring the who's allowed to do what and how, OK? The how is the different ways in which we may be filtering the data. So the filtering could be done by content, or it could be done by schema. So within the content, it could be that a LandCope could only get information from an ICE, but perhaps not from an SS. That's the content. The schema would be, if you think about a regulatory, right? it may be that you want to extract the who, what, when, where, and how out of ICE, but for privacy reasons, we may not be authorized to disclose the who. OK? So this is what you're going to see in the toolkit um, and in, in the DevNet zone when you load up. Um, I'm not going to belabor and read all the points, but this is basically what to expect. Um, and we're trying to make it as easy as possible the advantage with the DevNet is if you don't have an ICE or you don't want to try it with in your particular installation, right? Um, the PX grid was released as part of the ICE 1.3 release. So if you're not quite ready to do that, the DevNet zone has already instantiated um, a test environment that includes the ICE, 
the PX grid controller. So all you have to focus on is the work that you need to do. So this is how you go about getting access to the toolkit through the DevNet zone. Um, next slide, please. This is how you may expect to use it in a high level terms. I've already mentioned you can do directed queries. If you know that you have that ICE information, you might just say, I'm curious to find out all of the users that are running MacBook Pros, for example. Okay? So that could be a type of directed query. You may actually want to do continuous monitoring. So you may want to register and say, tell me and notify me as soon as new presence comes into the network. Okay, so two different ways in obtaining the data with different time latencies involved. Next slide, please. All of how you connect into the grid, how you do the directed queries, how you register to get the dynamic notifications are also provided to you as scripts or depending on whether I'm still a C and assembly programmer, that's how old I am, but the toolkit provides you both C and Java interfaces. There's both sample scripts and codes and schemas to show you the examples for how you might go about getting this level of work done. Next slide, please. From a very high level perspective, what we're trying to do is facilitate, and again, recognizing that ICE already gives you that richness of data of that end tuple. We're beginning with that as the first start of, we want to be able to share that so that you can get better visibility, better reporting, whether it's for security or asset management or configuration, okay? Um, to do that in a scalable way, okay? So from a security perspective, you may be working with different security vendors, Nessus, Mandian, pick your, you know, compliance, vulnerability, the different dimensions and security. So we know that there's gonna be an ecosystem where it's not just you coming into one, but it may be a many-to-many -many connection, okay? So we're trying to enable all of this in as easy a way as possible. From the Cisco perspective, we're providing the framework and the toolkits to allow you to do that. The partners have already started to harvest on that information and improve upon their solutions. That's number one. Number two, if you're not there and ready to do that development, there are partners, for instance, like Identity Over IP, who are already helping build those modules, if you will, and portals and GUIs to help you get where you need to be. <laughs> I can maybe take one or two questions if you guys have any. Please? But I only have Langkop in one location. Can I use this information as it with the other countries, for example? If you could repeat the question for everyone. Yeah, so um, her question was, she has ICE distributed basically in a clustered environment globally, but she only has one Landcope instantiation. So can you use the PX Grid ecosystem to allow for that sharing? And that is the perfect example for what we mean by the many-to-many -many and building the abstraction. So if you're building a Landcope application, for example, right, Landcope doesn't need to know that there are many instances of ICE. The controller would know that, okay? So the Landcope application could just say, I just want to know from my enterprise, all of the users across my enterprise. The controller would handle the brokering and the knowledge there, there are multiple ICEs there. Do we have time for one more question? Yeah? Nope? All right. Thank you. <laughs>